Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video discusses the NOAA Time of Observation Bias Adjustment. The U.S. has the best network of weather stations in the world. We have about 1,200 stations scattered fairly evenly around the country, and they have a very good record going back to about 1895. If we average the temperature at all of those stations, what we see is that the hottest decade in the U.S. was in the 1930s, as seen in the blue line. And generally, temperatures have declined. But what NOAA reports to the public is the red line, which shows fairly steady warming since the 1890s. So what's causing this discrepancy between the measured and the reported temperatures? Well, NOAA does a series of adjustments which change the temperature record, and one of these is called the Time of Observation Bias Adjustment. So what is the Time of Observation Bias Adjustment? Well, the theory is that in the past, people used to reset their min-max thermometers in the afternoon, and now they do it in the morning. Resetting the thermometers in the afternoon theoretically causes double counting of hot days. And resetting the thermometers in the morning theoretically causes double counting of cold days. In order to compensate for this time of observation bias, what NOAA does is they cool past temperatures. As you can see here, they do that quite dramatically. And they warm recent temperatures. So is this adjustment legitimate? Well, there's an easy way to test that out. What we can do is group together thermometers, which in the past took their temperatures in the morning, and ones which took their temperatures in the afternoon. Then we'll compare the trends and see if the adjustment has any validity. So what I've done here is group the data together into morning and afternoon groups. The blue line represents all the stations which took their readings in the morning during July of 1936. And the orange group is all the stations that took their readings in the afternoon during July of 1936. So what I'm graphing here is the percent of days over 90 degrees. What we see is that the morning stations tend to have more 90 degree days than the afternoon stations. But the trend lines are exactly the same. They're parallel. That means there's no difference between the behavior of the morning stations and the afternoon stations. So why would the morning stations be warmer than the afternoon stations? This seems counterintuitive. Well, the reason is simple. It's because people in warmer climates tend to get up and do things in the morning, whereas in the people in colder climates would prefer to do them in the afternoon. This graph shows the average latitude of the morning stations in blue and the average latitude of the afternoon stations in orange. What we see is that the morning stations average about one degree latitude closer to the equator than the afternoon stations. So that's why we see warmer temperatures at the morning stations than we do at the afternoon stations. So in order to compensate for this difference in latitude, what we can do is use temperature anomalies, which are the difference from the average for that particular station. That brings the two groups together the morning stations in blue and the afternoon stations in red. And what this is is the average temperature of all of the morning stations and all of the afternoon stations. And we can see they are essentially identical. The dashed lines here shown in red and blue are the trend lines. They're sitting right on top of each other so you can barely distinguish between them. What that tells us is that there is no difference in the trend between the morning stations and the afternoon stations. This shows us that the time of observation bias adjustment has no validity in the real world. Now let's go back and look at the graph showing how NOAA is actually adjusting the data. They're making these huge downward adjustments to temperature, largely based on the time of observation bias which we've just shown is a fake adjustment. 
Another way to test time of observation bias adjustment is to compare the behavior of two adjacent stations. These stations are in Missouri. In July of 1936, Mexico, Missouri took their temperatures in the morning and Warrington, Missouri took their temperatures in the afternoon. If time of observation bias theory was correct, we would see more hot temperatures at Warrington due to double counting than we do at Mexico. So let's see if that's the case. What this graph shows is the number of 100 degree days at the two stations. Mexico, the morning station, is shown in blue, and Warrington, the afternoon station, is shown in red. If the theory was correct, we would see consistently more 100 degree days at the red station than we do at the blue station. But we see the exact opposite. Generally, the blue line is higher than the red line. The locations of the peaks are essentially identical in the morning and afternoon stations, and their relative sizes are pretty similar. But consistently, we see more 100 degree days at the morning station than we do at the afternoon station. This is not the behavior we would expect to see if time of observation bias was legitimate. Around the year 2000, NOAA started getting very concerned that the U.S. temperature record, which is the best in the world, was not showing any warming like their theory predicted. So they started looking for all kinds of excuses and reasons to alter the temperatures, cool the past, and create a warming trend that doesn't actually exist. Someone wrote a comment on Steve McIntyre's blog a few years ago. If the present refuses to get warmer, then the past must become cooler. That's exactly what NOAA is doing. They're altering the data to match their theory. Junk science at its absolute worst. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.